Welcome to Fayetteville in Focus, the city's program highlighting stories from around the city. Every two weeks, a new episode will air on Fay TV, the city of Fayetteville's government access channel. Fay TV airs on Channel 7 on Time Warner Cable. It's also streamed online at FayTV.net. And if you like what you see, there's plenty more that can be found online by liking the city of Fayetteville on Facebook or following us on YouTube. Starting out our show this week, we'll take a look at some of our recent happenings in our Fayetteville in 5 news segment. And our feature story today is about the new Doing What's Right campaign pain in the fraud, waste, and abuse hotline. And wrapping up the show, we'll, we'll take a look at some upcoming events in the calendar of events segment. And Gavin, I think mm. there's something there that you'll really be oh, interested in. what's you got in. coming up in the next couple weeks? You like foosball? Oh, of course. Who doesn't? Okay. Well, there's a twist on foosball, so we want to stay tuned to find out more about that. <laughs> well, let's get started with the show then. City of Fables proposed a funding model for the downtown baseball stadium that includes investment from the city, county, and the private sector. The model was approved during the city council's meeting on September 12th. Residential tax and ratepayer increases are not being considered as part of the means for funding the stadium, which was a goal for Fayetteville City Council and city staff. 29 to 33 percent of the proposed funding for the stadium would come from reductions in the city's general fund operating budget. 18 percent would come from the team's annual lease payments. 16 to 20 percent would come from expanding the tax base by increasing the number of the businesses that will grow around the stadium and by pro adding property taxes from Fessel Park Plaza, which is currently owned by the city but will be sold as part of the agreement. 14 percent would come from upfront contributions from the city, 9 percent would come from parking revenues generated from events at the stadium, 8 percent of the funding would come from general fund savings for the city coming from the expiration of existing economic development incentives. And the final 2% of the funding will come from the city saving money by sell selling Festival Park Plaza. Combined, these sources will fully pay off the expected 30-year limited obligation bonds. In addition, all future capital maintenance requirements will be funded by a ticket surcharge and from naming rights. The city is planning to hold another public forum to seek a residential input. We'll keep you informed once the date and time is set for the forum. The Opioid Abuse and Awareness Task Force recently held a press conference to announce some of its findings and solutions to address the problem. Like many communities across the country, our community has seen an increase in the number of people addicted to opioid painkillers and to heroin. The task force main focus is to reduce the number of opioid overdoses, educate providers who prescribe opioids and provide other options, bring awareness to the general public on opioid addiction, and treatment and promote treatment and recovery resources. Down. The task force was started in May when Mayor Nat Robertson and Elizabeth Goolsby, director of the Fayetteville VA Medical Center, brought together a group of individuals of from the state, together. county, and city. Yep. Some of the outcomes of the task force include the creation of two recovery centers in the coming year to provide services to residents and veterans alike, in addition to a 24-hour crisis hotline. Fayetteville police are now trained and equipped with naloxone, which can quickly reverse the effects of opioid overdoses, and several local television and radio stations have also volunteered to air PSAs produced by the city to help raise awareness about the issue. The Fable Police Department recently unveiled a new website and the One Campaign. The new website, FayPD.com, is a mobile device friendly website and is designed to be faster and easier to use and will allow officers to post real-time info and breaking news to the public. The new website also ties into the city's website that was redesigned last year. The Fayetteville Police Department's old website URL, BeTheBadge.com, will still work, but it will now redirect to the new website. The One campaign began more than four years ago with an increased emphasis on community policing within the department. The motto for the One campaign is one agency, one community, one family. The Fayetteville Police Department is one agency with more than 390 sworn officers, serving one community in partnership with residents to improve quality of life issues. And together, we are all one family, police and citizens alike. Crews are busy constructing a new fast transit center at Robinson and Russell Streets. The majority of the construction is expected to wrap up by the end of the year, with buses tentatively to begin service out of the center in February. The fast transit center will serve as the main hub and transfer center for fast, fixed route vehicles. The center was made possible by a Federal Transit Administration grant for $10 million. The transit center will also be served by Greyhound, Megabucks, and taxis, in addition to being a block away from the train station. The transit center will also include retail and office space for rent. Well, it's finally happening. Bragg Boulevard is closing to through traffic 
Now that the intersection of Bragg Boulevard and Murchison Road in Spring Lake is open to traffic, traveling in both directions. Starting on September 15th, Bragg Boulevard is closed to traffic heading north, starting at Howell Street near Stryko Golf Course in the Fort Bragg Fairgrounds. Drivers heading north will instead take I-295 and exit at Murchison Road to reach Spring Lake. Golfers and residents heading to the fairgrounds at Fort Bragg will only be able to reach Stryker Golf Course and the fairgrounds from the south side on Bragg Boulevard. Southbound traffic heading to Fable will be routed on the Murchison Road, where you'll be able to exit on the Randolph Street or Honeycutt Road to enter the installation or continue on to Fort Bragg along Murchison Road. Drivers going to the Sand Hills Veteran Cemetery will take the Randolph Street exit off of Murchison Road. The Butner Road Access Control Point is now temporarily closed because of construction on Bragg Boulevard. It will reopen once construction is completed, which is expected to be around late December. And to help alleviate congestion heading on the Fort Bragg, both access control points at Manchester Road and Knox Street will be open 24-7 while construction crews are working on Bragg Boulevard. Well, in this focus segment, we're going to be talking about the new fraud, waste, and abuse hotline. I'm joined today by Mayor Robertson. He sits on a committee that looks at the audit and how to improve efficiency. And tell me, Mr. Mayor, why is it so important for a municipality to be good stewards of the taxpayer's money? You know, our residents want to make sure that there's full transparency and efficiency uh, in the government that they are paying their taxes into. And this, uh, the audit committee certainly ensures that, uh, where they're able to, to go in and look at detailed strategically detailed um, financing and efficiencies within each department. Do you think having a program like this and, and a committee like this helps to build and gender that trust with between uh, the municipality and the citizens? Absolutely. Trust and confidence uh, between the citizens and, and the government. And you know, in every election, no matter where you are or, or what the election is, you're always talking about that government wastes money. Well, what this audit committee does uh, through the fraud and abuse uh, hotline that we're setting up will detour that, and hopefully folks will be able to see that uh, the city of Fayetteville runs as efficiently as any government can. Excellent. Well, uh, we're going to take a look at the new fraud, waste, and abuse hotline and how you can be a partner with the city and making our community efficient and effective. Experts estimate that the average city loses around 5% of their annual revenue to fraud. For a city the size of Fayetteville and our operating budget, that could equal millions of dollars in lost revenue. That type of money could be used to build pools or pave city streets. Fraud hurts everyone, whether it's a citizen who doesn't receive the full value of their taxes or whether it's the loss of confidence that the public has in our local government. Fraud comes in many forms. It can come from outside of the organization, from vendors falsifying invoices for services rendered, or from citizens creating bogus checks from the city, or cashing a check from the city that belongs to someone else. Internally, fraud can come from city employees who skim cash from the register, falsify time cards and expense reports, misuse purchase cards, use city property for personal use, and by taking cash paid for city services, such as parking fines or permits. No matter the form of fraud or who is responsible for it, it doesn't happen by chance. In fact, it is usually predictable based upon the fraud triangle. Need, rationalization, and opportunity. Um, people rationalize that they deserve the money, they need it at home, and they say they'll pay it back. And finally, that opportunity presents itself, and some actually take that opportunity. There is only one element of the fraud triangle that management can prevent, and that is opportunity. We do that by having strong internal controls. That means that we do frequent audits, that means that we require supervisor approval, and it also means that we rely upon fraud detection. According to a recent study, for organizations with more than 100 employees, 44% of all fraud is detected and reported through a tip. In most organizations, nearly 52% of the tips came from employees. This is the reason the city is reintroducing the fraud, waste, and abuse hotline, and the city is rolling out the Doing What's Right campaign. To report a case of city-related fraud is as simple as picking up your phone or going on the web. A toll-free number operated by a third-party company is available at 1-877-339-4715. To report online, visit FayettevilleNC.gov slash doing what's right for more information. Whether made by a phone call or over the internet, all tips can be made anonymously. What we care about is uncovering cases of fraud, waste, and abuse and to ensure the tipsters remain anonymous, which based upon best practices ensures people are more comfortable coming forward. 
The city's hotline, which is administered by a third party, is designed to maintain that confidentiality and anonymity. The hotline is available to report city-related cases of fraud, waste, and abuse. For non-city-related cases of fraud, contact your local law enforcement agency. Good exercise is one benefit of riding a bike, but another benefit is supporting the Special Olympics by participating in the Fayetteville Cumberland Metric Century Bike Ride presented by the Bicycle Shop and Fayetteville Cumberland Parks and Recreation. Take a 12, 30, or 62 mile bike ride through Fayetteville and Cumberland County. The event takes place on Saturday, October 1st at 8 a.m. and begins in Festival Park in downtown Fayetteville. You can register at the Fayetteville Cumberland Parks and Recreation Administrative Building at 121 Layman Street or online at www.active.com. You can also register on site. Registration begins at 7 a.m. on the day of the ride. Registration fee is $20. All proceeds go to benefit Special Olympics of Cumberland County. For more information, call 910-433-1547. Remember to ride safe and wear a helmet. If you like to play foosball, then you'll definitely be interested in this next event. The Airborne and Special Operations Museum is bringing this classic table game to life as they host the second annual Human Foosball Tournament. The tournament takes place on Saturday, October 1st, starting at 9 a.m. Participants should be ready to sign in at 8 a.m. Businesses, organizations, military units, families, and friends are encouraged to participate. There'll be a 24 teams competing for the top prize of $600. Registration is $150 per team. Beer and concessions will be available. You can register online at the ASOM Foundation's website or for more information, call 910-643-2778. I have to mention that last year's champions for this event was a team from the Fayetteville Police Department. Way to go, Faye PD! So if you're looking for something a little less vigorous, come out to the 4th Annual Patriot Outreach Day to enjoy food, music, and vendors. This is an annual fall event that promotes supporting the health and well-being of our soldiers, veterans, retirees, and first responders. This event takes place on Saturday, October 1st at the Tony Rand Student Center at Fayetteville Technical Community College. Bring your chairs and blankets and enjoy live music by Ryan Daniel, Jill Charles and Jamie Pridgen. For more information, call 910-705-6093. Discover the history and local landmarks and walk in the footsteps of historically significant personalities with a tour of Fayetteville's downtown historic district. Any history or architecture buff can explore the many exceptional buildings that have been beautifully restored to their original neoclassical, gothic revival, and Romanesque revival styles and more. Tours may include a visit to the Market House, the Fayetteville Light Infantry Museum and Armory, Liberty Point, Cool Springs Tavern, and one of many historic churches. To schedule a customized tour today, call the Fayetteville Local Transportation and History Museum at 433-1457 or 433-1458. Would you like to learn more about your local government and how the city provides services to residents? We invite you to be part of the 2016 Citizens Academy this fall. Participants will get an up-close look at all the major departments within the City of Fayetteville government, such as the Police Department, Fire Department Training Facility, Fayetteville Regional Airport, and more. Classes start on Thursday, October 6th, and are held each Thursday through November 17th. Citizens Academy is free of charge. To apply, visit FayettevilleNC.gov slash Citizens Academy or call 433-1717. One zero. Space is limited, so apply now. This will wrap up this episode of Fayetteville in Focus. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to watch this or any other Fate TV program, visit us on the web at FayetteTV.net. So remember to like us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And keep watching our live stream on our website or on Time Warner Cable Channel 7. Thank you for watching Fate TV.